Now, in this particular section, we are going to look at different eukaryotes and study the different kingdoms um, that they are found in. So, I'm going to quickly give you a review of um, the four or five different kingdoms and uh, we'll quickly look at uh, some of the major features of each of these, king of these kingdoms. So, let's look at why do we need to study this firstly. Um, it's because half of the diseases that are present in this world um, are caused by certain microbes that either belong to one of these groups. So sometimes you f find uh, eukarya, the disease that is caused by a fungi, an algae, um, a protozoar, or a helminthus. And uh, some examples of these are example malaria, hookworm, tapeworms, and African trypanosomiasis. So let's look at the first one. What are fungi? Fungi are either macroscopic or microscopic. Macro means large. So some fungi are large, for example, the mushrooms that you can very easily see. So these would be the mushrooms. And some are microscopic. For example, they're so tiny and so small that you need to see them uh, within, um, for example, the yeast. So, um, the study of fungi is called as mycology. Mycology means the study of fungi. Um, how are fungi and bacteria different? Um, fungi are eukaryotic, firstly. Bacteria are prokaryotes. Fungi have sterols, a kind of alcohol that are present in their cell membrane, which is absent in prokaryotes. Uh, the cell walls of fungi have glucans and manins and chitins. Notice no peptoglycan. Um, fungi reproduce by uh, structures that are called as um, spores and they can be sexual and asexual means of forming these spores. And the bacteria <clears throat> do not form spores. Um, they they divide uh, differently by conjugation or transduction and so forth. The kind of spores that we find in bacteria are not for reproduction, but they're actually um, the endospores. Remember, was a dormant uh, stage. Uh, metabolism of of fungi are limited to heterotrophs. Um, however, bacteria can be autotrophs. Um, so. Coming back to the characteristic of uh, of uh, the fungi, fungi always have uh, chitin, which is present in their cell wall, and they have a vegetative structure, and this vegetative structure is called as a hyphae. Um, hypha is um, is uh, the singular, and uh, these are actually uh, long filaments. And the long filaments can be either um, immensely long in proportion, or they can be um, uh, um, they can be septas, as they are called as over here. And these septas are joined by another hyphae. So here is a multi uh, self um, uh, segment which has multi uh, hyphae, and um, and this is called as the septa hyphae, and the other one is the synthetic hyphae. Notice in this one, there are multi nucleus up here. You see one cell that has many nucleus. Up here, you see individual cells that have one nucleus in them. So these are the two different kinds of hyphae that can grow in um, in a fungi. Hyphae grow by pretty much elongating at its tip, as you can see from these pictures. They, they're just growing out. Uh, when a fragment breaks, it can, uh, um, it can initiate a new hyphae and so forth. Um, this is a, um, this is a vegetative, uh, um, way of, um, vegetative state as they're called as. See them in molds and, uh, for example, when bread gets uh, bad, you can see the fiber or hair-like structures and that's, those are all these hyphes. Um, um, fungi can be um, dimorphic. So, for example, you can have a yeast that is uh, just by itself or the ones that have uh, uh, filaments or hyphae. That's what it means. They have two different um, ways um, or two different forms of growth. Kind of interesting, huh? So let's look at yeast. Um, yeast are non-filamentous. Um, they're unicellular. Um, they're type typically spherical or oval, and um, they're like mold. Yeast will divide um, 
by a budding. Um, for example, one of the common ones that we hear a lot about are, is the Saccharomyces or the or the yeast that gives uh, makes um, bread rice. Um, so here is a bud that you can see it's coming out and it will eventually um, separate itself and here's there are more buds that are coming out of the of the one cell and so it's a, it's an asymmetrical division um, pathogenic uh, fungi are um, also um, interesting to see that they can grow at two different temperatures so that's why they're again another proof of its being diamorphic um, Yeast will grow at uh, 37 degrees Celsius, which is like a body temperatures, and mold will grow at a lower temperature. So that's another proof of dimorphism. How do uh, fungi reproduce? Fungi reproduce asexually um, by forming spores, and these spores are called as uh, sporangiospores. And um, the the shapes of these sporangiospores are um, they're all kinds of uh, pretty much sporangiospores. For example, the first one we see up here is the conidias, and the conidias are um, produced in chains at the end of a conidiophore. So these are all coming out and these are little conidias. Then you have uh, uh, conidias that are formed by fragment of uh, from a septa and they form what is called as the orthoconidia. Uh, one species, uh, for example, um, can produce uh, these conidias are shown to you in this picture up here. Um, another kind of uh, conidia spores are blastoconidium and these are <coughs> excuse me buds that are coming off the parent cell and there is another kind which is called as a chlamydiospores so <coughs> all these different um, ways of uh, forming spores and these are all asexual formation of spores um, I want you to know what a sporangium is. A sporangium is uh, is the region where uh, these spores will be produced, or the sacs, as they're or or they're as they're called as. And sporangiophores are actually uh, the aerial hyphae where they will be formed. Another way that the fungi reproduce is by sexual means. In a, in a sexual fungal reproduction, spores result um, um, in uh, with three phases. Actually, this is the first phase, which is plasmogamy, <clears throat> in which a haploid nucleus of a donor cell penetrates the cytoplasm of a recipient cell. Plasmogamy, which will be followed by karyogamy, which is the positive and the negative strains will fuse and <clears throat> give rise to a diploid nucleus. Uh, in the third stage, um, the, the diploid nucleus will produce haploid nucleus or sexual spores. So this is a sexual form, a sexual cycle. Um, Fungi undergo alternation of generations. So one generation will form asexual, the other generation will give rise to a sexual, and then an asexual. So you can see from here it goes like this, and then it can go like this. Um, it's trying to get a highlighter here. It will, excuse me, here it will go like this, and then I think I'm having a little trouble with my highlighter. Okay, let's see if I can get it again. I have a little problem with uh, my computer right now. I'm trying to see if I can resolve this without losing all this content. May have to stop this recording. Um, okay, now we will go on to the next slide, which is on sexual uh, spores. Um, the the zygospore are produced by the fusion of haploid cells uh, from the zygospore. So I'm going to go back over here and I'll show you the stages. Um, here was the conidias that were produced. Um, 
Hang on, let me get my pen back. Um, here are the conidias. Notice the conidias are producing these hyphae and which resulted in the vegetative um, mycelium which give the three stages that we just talked about. Um, after these stages, uh, we see that um, the ascospores will, can be formed in a sac by ascus, which is actually a sexual um, stage, of, um, stage of the life cycle of the fungi. Basidiospores are formed externally on a pedestal as a basidium. So there are two types that the spores are being formed. One was the sexual and one was the asexual one. Or actually this should this should not be written as sexual spores. I should have written that as asexual spores. I'm just checking in the book. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go on to the next one, um, and which is more important, the fungal diseases. Um, any fungal disease is called as mycosis. Mycosis is the term that is used for um, uh, a fungal disease. It, it can be generally um, long-lasting, and this fungal infections take forever to get clear up. What um, my, Mycosis can be divided into five different layers or five different uh, categories. Systemic mycosis is the one that is deep within the body. For example, um, it can be uh, any kind of tissue or organ. Uh, it can be a fungus that's lived in the soil. Uh, for example, an inhalation of spores through um, a respiratory tract can lead to an infection in the lungs and st then f from there goes into the body. These are all systemic myco my uh, mycosis. The next one is subcutaneous mycosis, which is beneath the skin. And that can res usually result from a punctured wound in the skin. A cutaneous uh, mycosis are those that are if, 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 uh, affecting the uh, dermatitis, uh, for example, hair, nails, and um, epidermal uh, surfaces. The next is superficial, uh, which can be on the hair shaft. Uh, diseases that are present on the shaft. Those are um, superficial epidermal cells. And the last leg are the opportunistic mycosis. That is, um, it's generally harmless in a normal habitat, but become um, pathogenic in a in an environment when the host is uh, traumatized or when you go under uh, a, a strenuous stress, then these um, can lead to a, a pathogen can um, can arise from this condition. Okay, the next slide. Um, I'm going to skip this slide because this is pretty much the life cycle which we already talked about in the previous section of the fungi. And this is another example of rhizopus, which is an opportunistic my 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 mycosis and how it has a alternation of generation. Alternation of generation means that it will... Um, be sexual um, generation and then it will have an un asexual so it alternates between these two stages another example of or another proof of that it happens um, zygomycota are um, it's a um, um, these are um, co these are um, fungi that undergo conjugation. In examples of zygomitosis, are rhizopus, uh, which is uh, the mold that causes uh, um, bread to go bad. The second group of the fungi are the sac fungi, and these are the molds. And um, these uh, um, these will in these are the molds, and they are the septa hyphae. And some yeast are also included in this particular group. Um, um, they they are the ones that form the ascospores that is uh, uh, which will result by the fusion of the nucleus of the two cells. So some examples of ascomycota. Uh, the next one is the basidiomycota. These are the club fungi and they possess uh, septi hyphae and um, they are commonly um, large and you can pretty much see them uh, uh, macroscopically from a naked eye. So here is uh, some economic effects of um, fungi. I'm going to cross these three out. I would rather have you remember the first one only, that is the Saccharomyces, which has a positive effect on uh, bread, wine, and beer, and the negative effect on uh, is on food spoilage. Um, here is an, a nice chart that shows you some of the pathogens um, and their reservoirs in 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 the 
in the human body. An interesting one that you can um, see that how ciliated protozoans, for example, can be present in zoonotic pigs. Um, malaria is transported through a protozoan, and um, it it breeds. It's a human is a vector born. It's a vector born um, source. So just an interesting slide. I thought I'd inputted that in. Okay, the next one is um, um, helminths. What are these? These are actually a group. Um, these are um, these are sections of. Uh, tapeworms and flatworms and uh, these are multicellular and uh, they are they they cause uh, different kinds of diseases so they are eukaryotic um, animals that generally they have their own digestive system circulatory system nervous circuitry everything but they're highly parasitic which means that they specialize to live inside a host and when they're inside a host that's when they will cause um, different kind of diseases um, because they can either um, absorb the nutrients from the host they can uh, reduce uh, the nervous activity of the whole cell. Um, sometimes they, their means of locomotion is um, reduced because they transfer from host to host cell. So, um, and their reproduction is also very complex sometimes. So, um, the examples of these are your tapeworms and uh, roundworms. Um, humans can um, can uh, be carriers for these intermediate hosts for these uh, tapeworms. And in the last slide, we look at uh, now the major differences among all of these eukaryotic microorganisms that we talked about. Uh, it's an important slide. I think you can pretty much summarize everything from here. You can see the different kingdoms. And for each kingdom, you can see the different uh, examples. Um, important to know the terms chemoheterotroph. Chemo means to, with, with chemicals, they can produce their own food. Photoautotroph means that they use light to produce their food. Chemoheterotrophs means they depend on other chemicals, and chemoheterotrophs again means that they depend on other chemicals. Um, notice that uh, uh, LG, um, um, some uh, fungi, some um, and some and all helminths are multicellular, and we only have protozoans that are usually unicellular. Um, the food absorb acquisition method, um, notice that uh, there's absorption in fungi and protozoan spore, uh, diffusion for algae and ingestion for helminths. So this is just um, a summary of all the different kinds of eukaryotes uh, which um, will cause um, disease and that's why they are... Um, studied in microbiology because uh, they are medically they have an important role in causing certain diseases so this will conclude our um, second topic of uh, eukaryotes